just go through high school and you don't go on with math after that. And even more so if you, you know, go into college and want to take more math classes and, and continue to perhaps pursue one of these careers and, and many others. So square roots are very, very important. Um, and so with that being said, there are some vocabulary to be aware of. Uh, some of these you might've heard before. Um, I would encourage you to either take a screenshot, um, write some of these down. I will also post the PowerPoint, these slides into the Google Classroom so you'll have access to go back and reference this. Um, <clears throat> but with that being said, um, prime numbers. So a prime number is a whole number greater than one that cannot be made by multiplying other whole numbers. So a quick example of a prime number would be seven. There's no number other than seven and one that you can multiply together to equal seven. You, know, you can't divide it by two, you can't divide it by three, you can't divide it by four. Seven is a prime number. Um, another example would be 11. 11 is a prime number. You can't divide 11 by any num number other than itself or one. And so, yeah, any number that cannot be multiplied with two numbers together to equal it is a prime number. Now a composite number is the exact opposite. And the definition is a whole number that can be made by multiplying other whole numbers. And so an example of a composite number would be six. You can divide six by three or two, and that's not six or one. So therefore it's a composite number. Maybe I can separate these. Um, another example would be 10. You can divide 10 by five, you can divide 10 by two. There are factors that can be multiplied together other than itself and one. That makes it a composite number. And again, the, pretty much the opposite of a composite number is a prime number. They do not have factors that can be you know, multiplied together to equal them. And this will be important going forward. Um, and I'm seeing there might be some questions. One hundred and eleven is composite, Charles. I don't even know that. Oh yeah, it is, right? Because uh, no, I don't know. I don't even know off the top of my head if it is or not. I'd have to double check. I don't have that. See, I don't know everything. Even though we're teachers, there's things I don't know. I'd have to double check. But um, I will take your word for it, Charles. <laughs> um, and so with yeah. So with that being said, prime numbers and composite numbers, and from here, we also want to know what a radical is. And a radical is any pretty much any value that has this this shape. This is a, called a radical symbol. And so today we're going to be focusing on square roots, but there are other forms such as cube roots. And we can see here this is an example of a cube root because the index is three. So I'm just going to go through quickly um, and go through each of these um, labels here that show the different parts of a radical. And so the first and most obvious is the radical symbol itself. If you ever see this, this is the radical symbol. And then whatever is inside the radical symbol is called the radicand. And in this case, it is seven. So if you have the square root of, of 100, square root of 81, square root of 25, 25, 100, 81, those are all the radicands. Then we have the coefficient. This is no different than any other coefficient, the way it's used anyways. So if you have 5x, if you have 10y, the 5 in front of the x or the 10 in front of the y those are the coefficients because they're being they're a coefficient being multiplied by the variable. And this is the same thing, except instead of having a variable, we have a radical symbol and a radical. And so in this case, let's say it was 10 times the square root of seven or 100 times the square root of seven, whatever values in front of it is the coefficient. And then last but not least, we have the index. Now, in this case, this is a cube root. So therefore, there's a three here. But when a square root, nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, there is no two. There's an imaginary two. It's, it's always blank. So if this was a square root, there'd be nothing here. And you would just have the radical symbol. And that's what we're going to see today in the decimals activity. And again, there's always an imaginary two. It's very similar to exponents. If you have x to the power of nothing, usually there's, a, there's, there's an imaginary one there. It is to the power of something. It's just not shown. And it's implied that there's a one there. And in this case, if there's nothing here, it's implied there's a two there. And that means square root. And I want to check the chat really quickly. And Mrs. Alda says, Charles is right. 111 is composite. 
and it can be divided by three and 37. Very weird uh, factors that I never would have thought of at the top of my head. So yes, Charles was correct. It is composite. Okay, and so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and post the Desmos activity for today into the chat. Stop my share. And some of you are already in the lesson, the Desmos activity. Good on you. And here is the Desmos activity link. Please go ahead and get started on the first two slides. I will also unpause the activity. And please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. And also, if there are any questions about what I was showing on the PowerPoint slides, please let me know. And I will also be posting that into the Google Classroom so that you have access to it. <clears throat> okay, so. I'm, I'm going to lead into slide five, but just to, for a quick little example. So for slide four, we can see that the area of the square is 55 square units. And so we know that if you want to find the area of a rectangle or a square, you multiply the base times the height. Now with a square, we know that the base and the height are equivalent. So we know that it's going to be a one value being multiplied by itself or a squared value. So what we do is essentially, instead of finding the area by multiplying the base times the height or the length times the width, whatever you want to label them as, you're working backwards. We know the area. Now let's find the length of one side because we know once we find the length of one side of a square, we know the length of all of the sides because they're all going to be equivalent. And so taking the square root of the area gives us the length of one side. And so for example, let's say we had a square with 25 square units. Well, we would know that one side would be five because five times five base times or length times width base times length um, would equal 25. Five times five equals 25. And so the same thing applies here, except 55 isn't a perfect square. And so it's going to be the square root of 55. And so we're going to take that same approach to slide five. And so if we know, so for example, in square A, we know that the length is the square root of 55. So if the length of one of the sides is square root of 55, then we know the area must be 55 because the square root of anything multiplied by itself is that same value. So the square root of 55 times the square root of 55 equals 55. Imagine that if, because you can imagine if this, let's say this was nine. The square root of nine is three. So the square root of nine times the square root of nine is the same thing as three times three. And again, that equals nine. So anytime you, you multiply a square root by itself, you get the value inside the square root. And so for square B, we're working backwards like we were for slide four. What's the square root of 81? Or think about it like this, what two numbers can I multiply by, their, by themselves to equal 81. And this is a perfect square. So there is going to be an actual value here. And then with C again, this is a little different. We're working forwards. If we know the length of one side of the square is 2.5, then we know again, length times width. But because it's a square, they're all equivalent. So it's going to be 2.5 times 2.5 to figure out the area. And you would take this approach with all of them. Either you're working forwards or you're working backwards. So you're either multiplying it by itself or you're taking the square root, which are some essentially inverse operations.
That means they're essentially opposites. So instead of taking the square root, you multiply by itself. Those are opposites. Did that help, Hassan? Cool. OK, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I think I'm going to double check your progress on slide five. Some of you have started to finish or have finished it already, but most of you are still working on it. Square is going to be the square root of the area. And in this case, that's square root of 55. And I'm going to go ahead and try it. And now I can see here, if I drag this down, boom, perfect. So the length of one side of this square is the square root of 55. And then in decimal form, it's telling me it's roughly 7.4162. But if you try and type decimals, uh, it's, you're going to be forever trying to guess it precisely. And so writing a ra in radical form is always the most accurate. It's always nine times out of 10 in math classes, they don't want you to give an answer in a decimal form if there's a radical. They want it in simplified radical form most of the time. I hope that this helps. Are there any questions on slide four? I know there were a few of you on it. Um, maybe some people are going back to it now to double check, but please let me know if you have any questions about that. I can go over any of these slides all day, no worries. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, but again, still, please let me know if you have any questions on any of the slides. We have another square and it's asking us how far does the turtle need to travel to trace one edge of the shaded square? So, or in other words, how, how long is one side of the square? And because this is tilted on, you know, on its edge, on its point, and right now it's on five, if we go back and we look at the other examples, um, whenever we moved them, we can see here that if it's, if it's tilted up like this, whenever you pull it down, like right now, the point is on right about 11. And when you pull it down, it always ends up going further because it's tilted like slowly when you pull it up, the point gets pulled back. If you were to pull this all the way back, you know, the, this point would keep going farther and farther and farther to the left. It would go up as well, but it would go farther and farther to the left. And so we know if we were to pull it all the way down, it's gonna be a little bit further than where it's at now on the X axis it's going to keep pulling this way the more and more you pull it down until it reaches the bottom. And so looking at slide six, we can see that because it's tilted up, if we were to pull this down, right now it's at five, but we can imagine if we were to pull this down, that it's actually, it's probably gonna be a little bit past five, right? The same way the other one was. It went from 11 to a little bit over 12, but it was higher. I had more distance to go. This one's almost there. So if we pull this down, we know it's gonna be a little bit more than five. So if it was five, we know that it wants us to um, find one side, right? So let's say it was five. The area would be 25. And so one side of the square would be square root of 25, but we know it's a little bit more than five. We don't know what though. So 5.1, 5.2, you know, we're not entirely sure, but we know they're gonna want a square root answer because that, that's how all the other Desmos activities have been, have been wanting it in square roots and that gives us a precise answer. And so it's not square root of 25, but we know it's gonna be a little bit bigger than that. So maybe it's square root of 27. Let's check it. Nope, a little bit too far. So that shows me that square root of 27 is too big. So now instead of that, how about we try square root of 26. And that works. And so this is like a little bit of a guess and check. You're just kind of estimating um, because if it was five, it'd be this, the area would be 25 and that one length would be the square root of 25. But we know it's a little bit bigger than that. So just check, it, check one that's a little bit higher. And so instead of square root of 25, I tried square root of 27 and 26. Square root of 26 was the answer, um, and that is correct. 
Later on, uh, I don't know if it's going to be this year, but next year you're going to figure out how to find this length without guessing and checking. It's a little thing called Pythagorean theorem. And uh, it's a lot easier <laughs> with that theorem. But in the meantime, we're just going to guess and check. Um, I hope that answered the question for those of you that are still on slide six. Um, but yeah, this one's more of just kind of a, a guess and check for now. Any other questions? Um, let me check, Kevin. Slide six. Uh, did you mean slide five, Kevin, for the uh, shape B or square B? Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, that is correct. And I'm assuming you took the square root of the area to find that, right, Kevin? Okay, cool. Yep, if you do that for the rest of them, you'll knock out the rest of that slide perfectly. Okay, um, I'm checking, look, okay, yeah, some of you have done a lot of challenges. Great job, Vivian, Charles, uh, and then a few of you have already done three as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the rest of the slides for the activity. <clears throat> and the rest of you, again, please let me know if you have any questions on anything. Doesn't matter if it's a slide I already covered. I will do it again. No problems. And if you're just acing this, then keep it up. <clears throat> yep and just one last reminder yep if you're on slide seven or whenever you if, if you're there now or if you're about to be there um, just remember to please do three of your fellow students challenges once you've done three of them you can go ahead and move on to slide eight and also please also create your own challenge <laughs> a couple of you did did uh, three of your students' challenges, but didn't create your own. So please do that as well. So on slide five, the best way to explain this is that, and actually some of these have the keypad, so you don't have to always type square root. You could probably just click on here and um, get rid of this. Yep, and there's actually a radical symbol right there. You can also click on. So you can either type SQRT or you can click the keyboard and plug in the square root value. Um, but for B, you could write square root of 81 but it is a perfect square. And so some of these don't necessarily need the radical sign. And you can actually simplify it even further because what times what equals 81? Nine, nine times nine equals 81. Um, and then for, so for C, so essentially what you wanna do is if you know the area, work backwards and take the square root. If you know the length, work forwards and multiply it by itself because these are squares. If you know the length of one side, you know the length of all the rest. Length times width equals the area. So 2.5 times 2.5. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but that is why I have a calculator. 2.5 times 2.5, 6.25.
we know 14 is the area. And so the length of one side is going to be the square root of the area. So we know we're going to write square root of the area. The area is, in this example, 14. Therefore, that is the answer. E, we know that the length is the square root of 44. So what's the square root of 44 times the square root of 44? Can I get someone in the chat to let me know? What is square root of 44 times the square root of 44? Yep, Eliza tells me it is 44 and that is absolutely correct. Any square root multiplied by itself is the value inside. So the square root of 44 times the square root of 44 equals 44. Just like we saw at the top with shape A, the square root of 55 times the square root of 55 equals 55. And again, we're multiplying this by itself because they're lengths of a square. Base or length times width equals the area. So 55, square root of 55 is the length, square root of 55 is the width. Multiplied together equals the area of 55. Same thing down here, square root of 44 times square root of 44 equals 44. Then last, we have 32. And we can take the square root of the area to find the length. And this is simply the square root of 32. So these should be the answers that you have four square root of five. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'll, I'll look at that, Jaden, in just a second. Um, so I would like, I would really hope most of uh, most of you will go back to slide five because many of you did get something wrong. I don't, it just showed up as an X on my screen. So there was something wrong in some of your submissions. I would say to please go back and double check your answers for slide five whenever you get the chance um, and make sure that you were doing those correctly. If you weren't doing these correctly, there's a good chance you might be doing the rest of them incorrectly. So this would be a good place to start and make sure you're getting these ones correct. Any questions on slide five at all from anyone? Okay. All right, Jaden, I'm gonna go ahead and check that slide you were asking about. Right now, I think that was Eugene, right? Yeah. Okay, let me take a look at slide seven. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen here. So for slide seven, obviously it depends on which one you pick. There's a challenge from each of your students. So this first one, okay. We can see that this is tilted. And again, I showed earlier, whenever you, if, let's imagine if you were to pull this down, every single time it comes down a bit further to the right than it is currently. So right now the length is about one, but we know when we pull it down, the length is probably gonna be a little bit over one. So therefore the, the length, because if it was one, one times one equals one. So we would have one squared unit, but we know it's a little bit bigger. So what's the next closest number? Square root of two. So let's try square root of two. Square root of two, check your work. And that is correct. And so some, and it's gonna be like that. Like, so if you know what it would be when the point is at a value, so if it would be one, the area would be one because one times one equals one, the length times the width. If, if this length is one, the other length is one, one times one would mean the area is one. And therefore, but because it's not one, we know it's a little bit bigger. So maybe it's 1.2, maybe it's 1.3, maybe it's 1.1. Whatever it is, we know it's a little bit bigger. And so if it's not gonna be square root of one for one side of the length, maybe it's square root of two, maybe it's square root of three. And so you can check each one. Um, I could try another one too. 
Um, let's try the Psalms. So again, so we see here uh, the right side, the right point of this uh, square is currently at eight. But we know that because it's at an angle, it's going to be a bit more than eight. If we were to pull this down, maybe it's at 10, maybe it's at 11. Who knows? So <clears throat> if it were 10, 10 times 10 is 100. And then it would be square root of 100. So we could try square root of 100 or 10. Let's try 10 and see what it, see what comes up. Too small. So 10 was not far enough. And again, I'm only, I wrote 10 without a square root because the square root of 100 is 10. I don't have to write the square root. I could have also wrote square root of 100 and it would have been equivalent. Um, so let's try 11 or let's try what's 121. So 11 times 11 is 121. So we could try 11. Let's see 11. Check work. Oh, too short. So let's try 12 times 12 is 124, right? 12 times 12, yep, 144, excuse me. So let's try 12, check my work. Oh, too far. So it's gonna be between 11 and 12. So if 11 times 11, is 121 and 12 times 12 is 144 we know that this is going to be a square root of a number in between those two so let's try square root of 30. or 130 sorry not 30 130. Ooh, almost, see, very close. Okay, but it's too far, so we need to go even lower. X, X plus Y, Y. A plus A plus A plus A. Um, we could, oh yeah, and that was too far, right? So one, let's try 128. And there we go, 128. Because we knew that square root or 11, which is uh, the square root of 121 and 12, which is the square root of 144, it was somewhere in between those two. And then from there we can try and guess other ones. I hope that, oh yep. Yeah. I hope that that, um, I hope that answered your question. Um, but yeah, you have to guess. And some of these, are, this is a little bit harder, but some nice job making it a nice, hard, difficult one. Um, Cause there's a lot more possible values in between 121 and 144 square root. So this took a little more guessing, but there are some other simpler ones that wouldn't take as much, but that is how you would do that. All right, um, there is only four minutes left of class. So if you are physically in the classroom, you can go ahead and wrap up, do whatever you need to do. Actually, Mrs. Aldis probably has a message for you all before, uh, before you leave. So please stand by before she 